We come to give you guys a show like no other today and every other day that we step forward or step in front of this microphone. We want to say thank you to everybody that's tuned in and tapped in. It's up there podcast now holds a place in the culture that we have fought for. It is not a place that didn't take us some building. It's not a place that was handed to us. That was a gift that was it was a preoccupied place. But we just happy to be here. So you in for a good show today. Um, just stay tuned in. You know, I feel good about my position in the game right now. I feel like a real nigga post to feel, man. It's up there, podcast. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Round of applause for my motherfucking supporters. Welcome. Welcome to It's Up There podcast right now. You all locked in with Big Loon, the biggest homie. Want to say thank you to all my supporters and the people that tune in and always is involved in what it is I bring to the game, man. I got a high level of respect for y'all. Although when I speak, I know I got to speak further than just the people that sit close to the stage. I got to try to reach the people that's up in the upper balcony, the people that's even outside the building at times, because I got to lead people to where the truth sits at. Right. And so I, I noticed something right. Number one, let me say this and get this out of the way. It's up there. Podcast videos can be exclusively found on Patreon dot com slash it's up there. Podcast clips and videos stagger on YouTube. F.O.G.F.O. TV on YouTube. Let's set the record straight. While the record reflects that, let's get back into what I come to speak about. We got a lot going on in the game. I, I feel a high level of involvement in a lot of the com- in, in a lot of the conversations that currently sit at the forefront of the culture. It's unfortunate my name isn't attached to those conversations, but we'll change we'll change that here soon. I want to send a guarantee out to the people that believe in me that you have nothing to worry about. No matter how it looks, no matter what it feels like, no matter what they want you to believe, you have nothing to worry about with me at the head of the situation. I have nothing but courage. I have nothing but understanding of where I need to be and where I'm going right now. There's some things I don't know. But long as I'm aware that I don't know everything, I'm in a position to get somebody on my team that does. Podcasting is in a very peculiar space right now. When you hear me holler and say things like, yo, I have to take my position. When you hear me say there's about to be a hostile takeover, I see the suckers get offended. I see the suckers have text threads about my indications and how I feel about my product and what I bring to the game. I find that interesting, but it's a familiar place for me. Oftentimes I find myself in situations where people that have nothing to do with have everything to say about. I'm getting better with ignoring niggas that have no motherfucking influence on what it is that I got going on. But with that being said, in this game, I got to make sure the people ahead of me understand that there's no hostility in a hostile takeover. When I say I'm doing a hostile takeover, I'm only speaking for the people that's on my back. But I know the suckers get afraid when when someone's confident in what they don't know to be true at the time. I seen how they treated Kanye running through the building. I seen how the label did Jay. I seen Diddy. I seen Dame. I seen Q. I seen niggas had to go and put their own money up and like, yo, didn't I tell you this work? But now look at you. 10x that. Right now, as I fight for my position, I need to be a little more clearer in what what it is that I'm fighting for. And see, you got to hit me because I make all my money sitting down and talking. Right. So you got to hit me when I say I say I need to be a little more clearer, not vocal. Those are two different things, although they could be simultaneously mentioned at the same time. Those take two different approaches. The people ahead of you sometimes are paranoid. They're afraid. 
They don't understand that when I say that I got to fight for my position, that doesn't mean snatching somebody else out of position. That just means simply that I got to do what it takes to carve minds out because there's no position available for someone of my kind. Now, there's variations of what I do out there. Very successful ones. But I got to have the ability to dance in between what is, what was, and what will be. I got to know where I land in between those three things. But I'm aware that a lot of people ahead of me are only counting on the fact that they're ahead of me. They don't have any innovation. Their approach is outdated. Their thinking and approach is extinct. And so when you hear some dude come jazzing it up and say, yo, I make podcasting look a little different than these dudes. Yeah, my jersey, I ain't wearing the small shorts. Yeah, yeah, the way I'm kicking it over here, I'm kicking it like this here. I ain't tucking mine's in. I want to wear some, yeah, so, but, but, but what I have to do is, again, I have to carve that, that place out. But the suckers confuse what I say. With their insecurities. So they hear me say. I'm fighting for my position. Or a hostile takeover. And they think that some sort of attack is attached to that. I want to be clear to the people that's ahead of me. And the people below me. And the people on side of me. And the people interested in me. I don't mean an attack when I say that. I mean we going to outwork people. We going to have better product than people. We going to have better quality than people. I will put together a team of individuals. That do a team volume of work from each individual. Because when I see these guys and they show up with their 16 team entourage, right? I say, I can do all that myself. So picture four of me on set. Picture 10 of me on a team, right? They're thinking how much we'll be able to get done. The ability to create the new shot for podcasting because, you know, the way you approach this thing is so important. But my position is, yo, I ain't either they going to work with me or I'm going to move in and they work going to be devalued. But there will be no attack on anyone. There'll be a peaceful transfer of power. We just willing to work harder than people. We willing to and we dealing with information. And we willing to go the extra mile. On this side, we know what's at stake. A lot of y'all done been tricked at what's at stake. They done tricked you that what's on the other side ain't worth what it take to get on the other side. I have not been tricked by these individuals. I know on the other side of this, there's something that can change a lot of different things. And so for me, I push with that in mind. But there, has, that, that, there will be no attack. We just going to show up on the block with the better work. I seen Mandy or Bridget, it was one of them that said that, yo, the dude that DM Lotto and gave a hard time was Lil Wayne. She's been in podcasting for years, but because she's not friendly with a lot of the blogs, they ran that story as girl says, trust me, everybody in the business knows what that is. They can find out, they have the resources to find out what show this is, tag that show and run some people that way. But because there's no relationship, those people, see, this is the thing. The people that stand to make money off the relationship, a lot of times they won't initiate the relationship. Because if they initiate the relationship, sometimes they think that means that the money comes off the table because what, what most people are going to say, well, you reached out to me. Everybody that comes across shade room and get tagged and things like that at some point has ran some sort of marketing to pay shade room to be on that platform. I don't think there's one person that gets coverage on there just from a standpoint of they never paid outside of maybe Boosie. And he may have ran a cologne ad or something. I don't, I'm not sure, but Boosie may be one of, one of the only ones. Now, let me say this. It's not 100%, but it's in the high 90s of the people that has spent at some of these platforms in which you see them get a, a friendly coverage on. It's a reason you see, see me send a shout out to Rashad at Earn Your Leisure, Troy at Earn Your Leisure. You see me send a shout out to my brother Brandon Marshall, Chad at 85 South Show. You know, 
these people are posted in a way where they where they're telling people that this is what it is popping. You deal with a lot of fragile egos. And when it comes to me and the business, I'm coming to put the business down. I come to put game down, affect the people that's not been affected by the things that y'all are presenting, most people in this space. So for me, guess what it is? It ain't saying that, yo, I'm coming to attack somebody because I'm finna create a space for me that may go past some of the spaces that's currently in position. It ain't saying I'm coming to attack nobody. I look at it like this. When Popeye show up, KFC got a problem. Popeyes don't got to, you know, uh, uh, run no billboard to say KFC chicken ain't no good or this or that. It's the quality of the chicken. People like Popeyes in the South more than they like KFC. It's a thing. It's, it's just a twitch on the chicken. It's something they provide to the market that KFC can't seem to get their hand around. People like KFC for what they like KFC for. But there's a situation where there's a KFC and a Popeyes next to each other. You see a clear difference. And Popeyes in that situation has, has a chokehold. On the people that show up that want fried chicken. But now, Popeyes is okay until Chick fil A show up on the block. Popeyes is doing just well against KFC until Chick fil A show up on the block. So it's natural in business that things show up. And that's what they got to deal with with me. They dealing with disruption. They dealing with disruption and they know what they dealing with. So what happens is, in my communication, I got to do a impeccable job at podcasting. I got to do a amazing and magnificent job at communicating to the culture because what I'm doing is I'm skipping the line. And if they allow me to skip the line and I don't know as much as it is that I'm supposed to know, then it's a failure on the culture. So I got that on my back. I understand that. But I want to be clear to the people ahead of me that there is no attack. We only respond. But there is no attack in place. There is no plan to diminish anyone's position to create my own. I, I just understand the laws of attraction. I understand how things work. And what I provide to the game is yet to be seen. A lot of people have prepped the audience for what it is that I do. A lot of people have massaged the audience for what it is I do. I thank those people ahead of me. But there has not been a lot of people that's been able to affect the people in a way that I have been able to on Instagram, on TikTok, through podcasts and the communication. It's just not that many people on that list. It's a very short list. Um, but let's get let's get into the show. Let's talk about Benzino. Benzino has had a rough week, a rough couple weeks. It's been in a situation where he's had a riff with his daughter. We covered that. He had a riff with the LGBTQ AI community. Um, on Clubhouse with Wack 100, we covered that. Um, now his first initial thing was was them saying, "Yo, he's gay because of situation at a hotel." He refuted that. Had some backup. Wack come out. A lot of people come out like, "Nah, that's how people travel." Like you hustling. That's how. That's how we travel, right? So that was the response to that. And now he's into a situation where a transgender has came out with some recording of him talking to the transgender very weird recording i'm gonna find that and we're gonna play that um yeah we'll take it in sections so i'm gonna find that and we'll play that first and i'm just now adapting to this type of world but who i was before i'm like alpha male you know what i'm saying i'm that nigga now yes i'm saying this shit is all new to me and i'm trying to be open-minded about it but then I'm like, you start saying, wow, this is crazy because she looks, I mean, the way they got you looking, the way you, it's just, you know what I mean? Like, so, so, and it's not like I've even, so, okay, well, let me go look at some other trans now. I haven't even looked at that. I haven't even done that. I love porn. I don't watch trading porn. I don't watch gay porn. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? I'm old in my ways. I'm a 55-year-old nigga. You know what I'm saying? So listen, like, daddy. So listen, daddy. Yeah, it is what I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try not to be. Selfish. Okay, since you're saying I'm, I'm being selfish. Yeah, because you're not thinking about me and what I could be going through. That's not fair. So you heard that that conversation with a uh, trans woman. I think her name is Shauna Brooks. In a situation to be on the phone call with Benzino. It's a very 
interesting approach he has on on that phone call. It, it, he he sounds like he's trying to understand something. Now, Benzino explains that this is for a movie. This is for a movie, um, in which he he played some role and made him have to not only be comfortable but communicate um, um, with this woman. So for me. First thing I said was, all right, so now what do we say about what Cora Ray said? See, I don't forget these things. So I said, all right, so Cora Ray was saying that you were in a financial situation where they wasn't as comfortable as you would like to believe. And if you're doing a low-budget movie in a situation that you stand against, that lets me know that the only motivation at that time has to be financial gain. So for financial gain, you will place yourself in a situation to maybe adopt certain things that you wouldn't adopt. Maybe you will, t you will take on certain things that you wouldn't take on for a certain amount of money when you're financially embarrassed or you're in a situation where you're financially vulnerable. You understand? So um, Benzino then came to explain a little bit of it. He did get into it. So 50 Cent got involved. Now, 50 Cent is in coaches headlines this week because young buck said some things and we'll get to that a little later in the show young buck said he had to file bankruptcy because because of 50 cents games or his legal games with taking music down and things like that and so buck mentioned his name which prime time for 50 to get buck back in the news and bring back up those uh rumors about being gay so he Brought that back to the news cycle and grabbed hold of Benzino and made him a part of it as there was some sort of fresh um, gay allegations going out online. So 50 is is a he's a wizard in regards to how he places those things together. Now, Benzino responded to 50 Cent and also those rumors of being on that phone call. Now, what before I play that video, I do want to say that calling you daddy, that is what things get slippery. Right. Because number one, this person is recording. And if you're recording, that tells me a lot about what you're willing to do with with whatever recording it is. Right. So if you got me on a phone and you call him, don't call me daddy. I'm not your daddy. Yeah. We uh, you know, and that go for even a woman I'm talking to like, nah, that ain't what that is. But I'll accept it from the opposite sex, uh, you know, quicker. Then I would somebody trying to slip it in like we don't have that kind of relationship for you to be doing that. But that was part of the game, you know, and so he find himself in that. I wouldn't be talking to nobody that's calling me daddy that I'm not interested in. That's just me. Let's listen to what Benzino said. It didn't happen. I came back. I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't have a car. I didn't have too much money. So I was doing my hustle thing out in um, out in uh, in California. It's about five years ago. You know, and um, came back here, ended up getting my. So you're listening to Benzino explain his financial situation. The airport, Cavario's from, you know, he's the one that made up Don Diva. Very, very, very good friend of mine. One of the smartest gangsters I know. Really nothing to play with, you know what I'm saying? You know, like I told Cavario, you know, all this internet shit. I said, I'm used to it. He ain't used to this type shit, you know. And, and, and my thing is, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all this shit. Like, no one's not going to come up to me or Cavario in person and dare say anything disrespectful in person. But we understand it's the internet. All right, cool. I explained it on Vlad what happened that, yeah, that, you know, Cavario picked me up from the airport. I came back to Atlanta and I was staying in um, hotels before I got my apartment. Of course, the Red Roof Inn doesn't cost that much. So, you know, if I'm going to speak, I was in hotels for almost two weeks running around. Um, I was doing my one, two. Don't want to get too much into that because I don't want to, you know, fuck Cavario up in, in, in any way because he he has programs now. He continues to allude to this is what I find interesting. And I'm not trying to fuck up his situation, but, you know, I had to do my one, too. He keeps he alludes to getting money through the street, but everybody deal is dealing with it is saying that they were financially in a situation. It's, it's kind of strange. And you my dad said. Um, when I fell down on my luck, wasn't really nobody there for me. Not too many motherfuckers was there, but that's all right. So my man, I, them streets are there for me. You know, I can go back and sell drugs if I, if you know, if 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 I'm need be, and that's, you know, that's always there for me. Okay, um, I'm not gonna be broke. What what broke 
what people would say is brokers to me would be, you know, subjective. Like what brokers to me might not be broke to the next person. You know what I mean? Um, my thing is, I don't I don't hold my head down in situations of financial stress because I'm a hustler and I go get it. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's been me. So that's what happened at the Red Roof in a Cavario. But of course, people are gonna try to take shots. Or whatever. All right, cool. The Shauna Brooks situation, when when all this is going down, it's like it's coming from everywhere. They're, they're dropping old videos of the situation with Althea. They're dropping old that that Shauna Brooks thing was like three years ago. Now, let's just have common sense, right? If I was fucking with a transgender and I was on the phone with him, don't you think that that conversation would be all like nasty as fuck? Don't you think you would have heard something out of me that 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 insinuated some type of sexual? Uh, when I'm talking to her, it was after when Althea made a big thing about it. It was a conversation that people are hearing now. And I'm saying, yeah, that lifestyle I'm not used to. I'm not used to talking to a transgender. I'm not used to communicating exactly. Not saying I'm not I'm used to dealing with her because I never even met her in person, right? Never met her in person. I sent you the trailer to the movie. The movie won a Miami, won the Miami Film Festival. The movie's about to come out on... Um, to be next month. The movie's an amazing fucking movie, and I'm glad. Shout out to that. I didn't know it won that. Shout out to that. So, when you listen to the the, the, the tape, and there's nothing me saying any type of sexual relationships that you would think that, but people are gonna try to take shit and try to smear my name. Okay, cool. I noticed that 50 cents. Curtis said something and posted. Very unfortunate, you know, because um. When I first met 50, you know what I'm saying? This is when he got stabbed up at the uh, radio station, you know? And um, Those I, he, got, he, he got stabbed up at the Hit Factory on 54th Street, you know what I'm saying? The big studio that everybody was going to. And I was with the made men at Sony Studios. He ended up running down there, coming to my studio session, you know what I'm saying? To kind of get away from Murder, Inc. I didn't know John and Black in them at the time. So, I had been fucking with Red Hot Love and Tone and the Trackmasters. And he asked me, he said, yo, I, I hear a number of good things about you. You a real nigga. He's bleeding on the side from getting stabbed. Okay? He had no money. He showed me a gun with no bullets in it, that his man, I guess, had pulled out but had no bullets in it. And I guess when they was beating him up, his man dropped the gun. I don't know if it was Yeo, yeah, I don't know who it was. You know what I'm saying? But he said that, yeah, his man dropped the gun, no bullets in it, and he got away. So he's bleeding on the side of himself and shit. So I'm like, damn, you need some help. You know, back then, I was, I was a millionaire back then. I had a car service at the Source magazine that, that, that we had on deck. When I called him a car service, I sent him to the hospital. Okay. So I kind of got him up out of that situation. For him to even play with this, you know. Well, hold on. How, 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 long, how long should it, should, I mean, you, you helped him in a situation which you felt compelled to. How long should it last for him not to talk about it? Like as far as something like this, it's, it's new, so he felt. Well, like how come he didn't? Well, how come he didn't talk about me being helping him? How come he's never talked about that? We heard that story before. You you told. No, no, no. How come he ain't never told that story? Benzino was talking about Fifty Cent helping Fifty Cent. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. So, so, so you know, later on, me and Ja Rule get close. We're about to get into right? some game about this. But then now, okay, now I guess I'm his enemy. What you shaking your head for? Because you gotta let me talk too, man. You can't just like, come on, Z. We're not, oh, like, okay, all right, I'm gonna let you. All right, all right, my bad, bro. So, hold nothing. on, Wait, so, no, no, all right. You, you, so you feel like you you feel like you was enemy now because you became cool with Jaro, or it's just a story he's talking about? That's that's that's. I mean, flip like that's obvious. That's that's obvious, no. I mean, <clears throat> if I helped you out out of a situation that and that you was getting hands and feet put on, stabbed up, you had no money to get to the hospital. If I helped you out. Wouldn't I be cool with you after that? If you, have, you, you you put me in the situation, you talking about me? I'm saying if 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 if, if you was getting hands and feet put on you, but you ain't see. Stop saying hands. If you ain't see, you see, stop. Them stop, niggas, man, stop. You see, you get the you listen, get listen, bro, bro, bro. Listen, flip. Here you the go. Nigga was in, the nigga was in the studio, 
They put hands and feet on him. They yeah. stabbed. They, they, they stabbed him. I mean, I seen the cut. He was bleeding. He was leaking all on the side of his shit. He showed me. Like, and so oh. if I did that, if, if I helped you out and sent you to the hospital, wouldn't that consider me and you cool? Yeah, but then if you, then he, I can ask you a question. If you was cool with the nigga, then why would you be cool with Ja Rule and them then? That's the same thing. L listen, 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 listen. First of all, first of all, like, how me and Ja got cool was because I ended up moving to Saddle River. Oh, man. And we end, and, and, and our kids ended up going to school together. Coy went to school with his daughter. My son went to school with his son. We ended up being cool that way, okay? I didn't go be cool with Ja Rule to go against 50 Cent. I, I, I really didn't even know about their beef until I started hearing about it, okay? This is my thing is, I'm going to ask you again. If I helped you, if I helped you out in that situation, because that was a serious situation. Like, let's say that he didn't come seek refuge in my studio who knows what murder ain't could it could could it, 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 it could have been worse but so, so 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 but how about also you and his man the nigga that signed him with that for a long time so he could have looked at it like that as well you forgot about that part say, so say that, that again that, say that oh, hold on hold on hold on say that again you and his man that signed him y'all went at it for a long time so so does you save and send him to the hospital who, who's this wait a minute who's this man this is new to me who who, who? me and his man that signed oh eminem yeah, so the, got you. Okay, so, the, so then maybe, maybe right, but but that didn't take place that night, obviously, because okay. obviously he said me, "Yo, you a real nigga." Um, I tone and poke talk highly of you, and then then blah. I mean, he was in my fucking studio session talking about how dope I was, and I helped him. I didn't even know Fifty. I didn't know him like that. I heard him from the mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? The point is, I helped that man in a real situation. Fuck the Eminem shit. Fuck the Ja Rule shit. I helped that man, me, Benzino, help 50 Cent, regardless of anything. I found it in my heart to help that man. I could have been like, get the fuck out of my studio. I don't want to have nothing to do with this. Why are you even down here? But I didn't do that. Called the man. Got the man a car, sir. So for those of you unaware of what why he's speaking on that, 50 has been, again, bombarding him online with certain things, uh, attaching him to Young Buck. Again, 50 had to respond to Buck in a sly way. So if Benzino, you're there too, and you've been messing with Eminem, let's get you on the plate as well. And it's news. Things are going around. I'm not sure why old videos are popping up. We're about to get into him crashing out for his first baby mom. I'm sorry. For his latest uh, baby mom, and we'll get into why that may be the case. He's good with this. Yes, he got jumped like you. We all get jumped. Stop, you know I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. He got I'm jumped. Not, he got I, the light. I'm not on, making fun jump. of him getting jumped. I'm not making fun of him getting jumped. I what I'm saying is about the situation. I'm, say, I'm saying. I'm saying. In, 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 in the history of hip hop, have you ever heard Fifty doing these with anybody? I have. Yes. With who? Outside and God I'm talking rules. about in hip hop. All the enemies this nigga done made in hip hop. Has he ever done this with? They anybody? don't want to fight him, huh? They don't want to fight him. Who don't want to fight him? A lot of niggas don't want to fight. He put hands on a lot of niggas. Who? I don't know. He did. I heard. Who? You know Z. Z you know Z. Stop. Z don't stop. I know. Everybody look, knows. Look, look, look. Everybody look. knows. That nigga's that nigga's a rat in the pussy in my book. Nah, a Z, chill out. He's Z, a, Z, he's, a, he's an informant, and and and, 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 and he has no morals. And he has no really good judgment. The nigga's a multi-millionaire, and he's posting shit about me that ain't true. Fuck that nigga. And I, I'll stick my dick in, in, in his girl's mouth. Wow. And then we can see who who's a tranny or who's all. Like, I don't play those games, bro. Fuck that nigga. Fuck that nigga, bro. I'm trying to make... Oh, listen, 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 listen. I'm trying to make a point to say that I help that bitch-ass nigga. Yo. Like, I help that pussy-ass rat informed oh, ass nigga. Oh, oh, so so you calling him a rat because he's a rat hold the on, nigga no. been on papers no he's not he's not a rat my nigga he snitched on john them long he's time not a ago rat. he's not a rat you know come on stop you know Yo, my nigga my nigga my nigga my nigga my nigga do you need the paperwork see i don't want no paperwork you don't I want the well then well if you don't want the paperwork then you can't say he's not a rat i saw the paperwork what did he ratted on the did what the nigga ratted on ja ruin them for that nope. shit that that happened 
Do, do you need the paperwork flip? So why did anybody get incarcerated for stabbing? Uh, uh, listen, listen. Did listen, anybody get listen, incarcerated? Listen, listen. You know what? We gonna get black. Oh, okay, so why don't we get black child and Cadillac Nobody tie on? Nobody wants to get black child. Now nah, you don't want to do that because you don't want the, the truth. Already you don't want interview. the truth. You you want to keep believing that this nigga's some type of gangster. That nigga's a pussy. It's not about the, that how, nigga's pussy. You call pussy now. He's Hold pussy. On. He's you pussy. You pussy now because he's pussy. He, but you never give him. I give him what he want. I give him what he want. Now you want to fight that nigga. Now you want to fight that bitch. nigga. You call him. You call him pussy. He's a bitch. Hold he's on, hold on. You bitch. didn't say he was a bitch before when you talked about him. You didn't say that. The nigga so just. The nigga, the nigga just. The nigga just insinuated that I had relationships with a transgender. Fuck that nigga, bro. Fuck his mother. Fuck anybody around him, bro. Nah, Fuck, nah, is nah. you crazy? Okay, okay. Nigga, I die for mine, bro. I die for my I die for my manhood, bro. I die for my manhood, bro. Enough, Zeno. Fuck enough, that enough. nigga. Enough. Word. All right, we all right, all right. Enough. Fuck, enough. is he crazy or something? Like so, and okay, now so hold up, so hold up, so hold up. So let's get back to the conversation because again, you don't think I'm a nasty nigga. Sexual, passionate, nasty nigga. You don't think that on that phone call with Shauna, there'd have been some type of nasty shit talk going on? Like you could see where motherfuckers done chopped up and edited the fuck. All right, so again, that's that's Benzino speaking about that phone call that we just listened to and how it was framed and his response to Fifty Cent. I wanted to play that because. Benzino, in my opinion, is in a very, very, very interesting place. By him having such a prestigious spot in hip hop in regards to the source. About him being one of the most influential in regards to that space, right? Crashed other companies and represented a lot of what we thought was culture at that time. Um, but I think he failed to evolve. I think what we're dealing with is someone that's living in a position that they may not be so proud of, but they got some things in their past that they for sure proud of. And that's an interesting situation for a human being, man. I always tell people that you got to know when to evolve. So this next clip that we're about to watch is... And then we'll get into some game about it Because again I just want to view this from a holistic standpoint But the next clip we're going to take a look at Is Benzino showing up to get his son You know Showing that he is a part of fatherhood He showed up to get his son At his latest baby mother's address She just so happens to be outside with a guy Walking the neighborhood holding hands Um and then Benzino gets into an altercation with those people and was later arrested. Let's take a look at that. It's a, uh, it's my, it's in my bag. I don't have a, I don't have a paper. I got a pen. So for those of you listening, what we're listening to is the police audio of them showing up on the scene where Benzino was there and encountered the mother of his children or his child outside walking with a dude. Uh, holding hands now they have said they've been broken up at this time but let's take a look at, at what takes place one of the neighbors very nice neighborhood one of the neighbors yeah. houses are kind of close but very nice neighborhood one of the neighbors called the police what county is this this is Gwinnett County? Okay, all right. The they tip. saw Ben Zeno you have your, uh, license on you by chance in the house or anything? It's in the house. Yeah, if you grab it for me. The mother probably right next to the child. They're not being like saying it's like the home town. Alright, so what's he saying? He's saying that he came up and watched the sun right here. Okay. And that essentially that guy and the woman? Yeah, the walked up. He started threatening me, talking about he's gonna fucking shoot me with a gun and all this other shit. Okay. And he just did it again in front of the fucking police. Okay. They're not close, I'm not sure. All right, well that guy's obviously saying, and the other witnesses that are down there are saying that. They walked back 
you were already at his truck, you were confrontational from the get-go, and that you punched his truck twice, which... I did it. I did okay. it. You didn't, I, 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 so you're saying you didn't hit his truck? Hell no. Okay. Hell no. Hell no. No. Fuck no. He had dents on the fucking truck before it came. I don't believe this, yo. All right. So it's whatever you want to do. I mean, the truck's immaculate. There's two dents on the side. They're both, everybody down there saying that he hit it. I didn't hit no fucking truck. Who, did, did, did Althea say I hit it? Yes. She said I hit the truck too? Yes. So he throws down his shirt after they confirmed that his baby mother also said that he hit the truck. For those of you listening, there's now three cops on, on board. There's three trucks on board. They're now trying to transition into figuring out unless, what's happening. Unless they feel as though they're threatened, which that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. You got to understand, he's saying that you were threatening him too. Sir. And everybody down there is saying that you've been threatening him as well. That's only because, that's only because, they're, because she's fucking him. So okay. of course they're going to say that. But what, what, why would the other lady have any business in it? Sir. The other lady wasn't even around. She okay. wasn't even here. Yeah, she said she wasn't she until. Wasn't even, sir, this, this, all this took place over here. She right. was standing way over there. They just want me to go. I'll go, man. I'll fucking go, yo. He what trying to get out of there. I, I got here. The okay. Now, I know she lives here. Where do you live? I live in, uh, in Brookhaven. Brookhaven? Okay. Yes, so, can I, I can call another Uber and get the fuck out of here, man. Oh, I just, can't believe this shit, though. Do you have a. Like, a, did you get his name already? I came with uh, ID. Taylor, I think. ID, okay. Yes, sir. You see, so, when he said he about to get out of there, now they want to make sure they got your ID in case he well, run. If, she, if you're not driving, how, I'm going to call an Uber. That's was he I'm already here? Yes, he's over there. I, I now, is, is she, she going to say that he can't go? You, you want to ask her? I mean, we will. I'm not, I'll let them So where ask. is she right now? She's with him? Yeah, I mean, she's right around the corner down there with them. Can I talk to her, please? No, please, can you walk me over and talk to no, her, please? No, because he's down there, dude. That's not no. going to go good. Y'all y'all can't be together. We've so been here for... to go down there with her then? Because she's fine down there with him. She doesn't want to be up here with you. That's the problem. Then let me go, man. No, we have your ID. Just give I us a second and we'll ID. get it back. Let yes. Let me go. Let me go. <laughs> he's trying to go down and talk to her. She's with another dude. Ain't nothing to talk about. So he was he was getting pretty upset in front of the police and cussing them out. Yeah, I'll give you a case number and everything. Which one has my ID? Which one has my ID? Which one has my ID? Just hang on. If you'll stay right there, I'll go find that out. Stay right there. I believe it's the investigator down here. Your baby's mother was a fucking clown, man. It's just hard, man. How long have y'all been split? I don't know. A couple of months. We just fucking a month ago. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what she said, is y'all tried to make it work, but it didn't work. Yo, he talks so much motherfucking shit. You got to maintain your love, man. You can't be out here doing stupid shit, trying to love somebody, man. That shit, they're going to... You can't reverse disrespect. Hey, hang up here, man. Hey, so he's come, walking hang up here. You, I know, but you have to calm down. I can't believe this shit, yo. I can't believe this shit. I can't. I can't fucking believe this shit. Stop. I can't believe come this back shit. Up here. I know. Just keep talking to me. They're not gonna let you go down there with them. <laughs> he seems to be boo horn. Motherfucker, he talked all this shit. On. He waited for the police to come. Okay, we well, and that's like, that's what we're doing. We we're dealing with it. Like fucking bed. I'm gonna get this motherfucker. You watch. You watch. You well, watch. I got I'm you. Yo. What you say, man? He fucking threatened me. With right, I understand, gun, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Oh, Fuck this. Fuck this. That motherfucker ain't shit. Shit. All right, you got to stop he cussing. You got to stop cussing. Okay? Compose yourself, man. We're figuring it out. 
I understand it's a shitty situation. Yeah, it's a shitty situation. I, I understand. I promise I do. Yeah, I'm waiting on my happy. What the fuck are we doing? I understand. Let's step back over here. Mr. Scott. Is that Scott? Raymond? Let's try to resolve this. Where is he at, He's sitting in his truck, so he doesn't have to. Right, no. He's not. He's not going. He has to wait until we figure it out. People are writing witness statements right now because that's what we got to do in this situation. People have to say what they saw. Yeah, she said he was fine. He's got an Uber here. Oh, okay. All right, so that's that's enough of, of watching that. Uh, for those of you who are, take, who are taking the audio adventure with us, we thinking about you guys as well. But you see Benzino go through a range of emotions at that time. For me, man, he's he, he, he's unstable. Right, you see him go from being angry to being sad, and and I know love places you in a very slippery slope. You know, love doesn't offer you a lot of time to deal with emotions in a way that you will be proud of when you look back at it. Especially when you compound problems, right? So you broke and you in love, or you strung out on drugs and you in love, or you homeless and you in love, meaning you need somewhere to stay, or you. You know, whatever the case may be, if you go to compounding those things and making those the reason why you are involved with an individual or the reason why you are staying involved with an individual, then that's a recipe for disaster. What I what I see when I look at Benzino is that he just failed to evolve. Benzino is still moving around like the sauce is popping. He's still moving around like he got a multi-million dollar media platform going on when you no longer have that that situation so your your circumstances change for sure but your mindset didn't change and that's the thing about being a human being we hate change what we don't understand is is that change is inevitable because time is going to continue to move whether you sit there and hope that it don't whatever you do time will continue to move which makes change inevitable but sometimes when we deal with some of the forefathers, right? Some of the people that was ahead in the race back when it mattered, back when we was just now covering ground, some of those people have failed to evolve out of that circumstance, out of that character, out of that situation that they was in in the 90s. A lot of times for me, it's heartbreaking. See, I view hip-hop through a different lens. So a lot of times my, I'm heartbroken when I show up to a legendary rap group and they got to come out in the outfits from the 80s i'm horrified that we can't accept some of our legendary acts as evolved as they are at this day and age who they are at this current stage and still appreciate who they were and what they meant in that time capsule what we call on and what we summons from our legendary acts in all facet of our culture is you got to show up, Mr. T, with all the ice, with all the gold shit on. Flavor Flav, you better not take that clock off. But our good ones, they knew. Because it ain't but two things that can happen. With, with, when you consider the fact that change is inevitable, it ain't but two things that can happen. And one of them are going to be for sure. And you got to choose which side of the street you fall on. The only two things that can happen is that people are going to tell you, yo, I hate to know you. Or on the other side of that, they're going to tell you, man, you still act the same. So as you moving through life, there'll be a certain time because you look at Benzino going through certain things. You like, yo, man, what do you do when you done got all you can get from it? What do you do when you done told that lie so many times that lie don't even work no more? What do you do? It's almost better to know when to turn the water off 
Than to get the water going Because a lot of these people Don't know how to Get from up under Where they was at And it makes it rough Even if you take The Benzino situation And you're like Yo bro You gotta evolve Ain't but two things That can happen bro I'd rather them tell me Yo Loon I hate the new you Then Loon You still act like The old you Cause the new me means new opportunity, new ground cover, new things, new blessings, new this, new that. When I continue to act like the person that I was, y'all will never let me out of that box. And I don't plan on living in a box. But what makes it rough to evolve? Because don't take what I'm saying and look at it and say, well, long Niggas is dumb Cause dudes ain't dumb They know they gotta evolve The problem is Is that when they evolve Soon as they hit Feel a little rough patch They pull back Shit the people ain't liking that Man they got to just tell me They know I got to keep going with it I got to build on it You see what I'm saying But what they do is They success is attached to their past So every time they see somebody They want to talk about the past you ever seen an old nigga? See, the real famous people do their best coming through the airport as to be unknown. You know, ain't no jury ride on the mega famous. Ain't no, it's, it's glasses and hoodies and ni- trying to come through the airport in stealth mode because I'm already in a position to where my identity has been compromised. They know who I am. They want pictures with me. They want to do things when I'm trying to get to the plane. It ain't that I'm an asshole. It's that I got 10 minutes before they start boarding. But sometimes you deal with that old football player that played linebacker, third string for the NFL Super Bowl, Steelers in the 90s, and he'll wet his ring out somewhere and be talking with it up. He wants somebody to know that it's past. Yeah, that's my past. I'm dealing with my past. I want you to see the past, what it was back then. I was the man back then. And it ain't from a standpoint that you're proud of it because when you're proud of it, you can wear it and not show it. It's a difference between wearing it and showing it because you can wear it and make it visible without showing it. Showing it off and showing it to people allows me a, a entry into your mindset. Allows me to know that you probably was one of them ones that rarely got in the game. You was the kicker, the third string kicker. You got a ring by default. But because of the success of that and because that is something worth writing home about. There's a situation in which you can fail to evolve from the person you was because you don't trust the person you could be. You got to be careful who you take care of when you're rich. When all the money in the world coming through, you got to pick wisely who you really, really taking care of. Because if it all ever goes away, you're going to have some disappointed attached to the to the feelings. Because you're going to have some people in your mind that posted did some things that they wasn't willing to do. You thought you paid yours for what you thought you paid in advance. You thought, hey, man, I'm going to put you in a house, get you a car and put you in, get you a bank account with some in it. Therefore, if something ever happened to me, I know I got a safe haven. And you'll be disappointed in the results. So you'll come back around that corner saying, boy, I show. I know I'm safe around here, boy. They got all my money. And them calls are going unanswered. And it makes it rough to disarm your feelings. Benzino got to know how to disarm his feelings. I know when he was a millionaire, he felt like he'd done a lot of stuff for a lot of people and didn't get that back. And that's how this game is. You went in the trick bag. You wasn't doing business. You was doing favors. And let's be clear. There's a difference between doing business and doing favors. Some favors... Turn out to be business But don't know business Turn out to be favors You see what I'm saying So you gotta know When somebody approaching you Doing business Versus somebody Doing you a favor And and in my opinion in In our culture We have a limited understanding Of what happens On the backside Of some of these businesses When they do crash All the people Talk to Benzino Never got a real side Of how it happened What did you mismanage what took place But I hate to see him Stuck 
to his history. History is important, but not but not at the expense of the future. You see what I'm saying? I see a lot of people running around putting a lot of history in people and telling the people a lot of history. And I get that. I understand. But history ain't that important to where I'm a I'm a study history at the expense of the future. I got to look forward. We don't plan on going backwards. It's important to know where we come from. And I get the game attached to that because they were doing high level game. They were putting game down back then. And when I say game, let me help people understand what I mean. When I say game, I just mean structure. I just mean people going for something. They trying to put something together. Just that's game. So they were putting game down back then. I just think that I can't put the put our history in front in front of our future. Now, there's a balance in which we got to study the history but prepare for the future. Right? And be diligent in understanding where we're going. Um, as well as aware of where we come from, in my opinion. But seeing Benzino not evolve, man, it's just, it's interesting. Speaking of Benzino, um, let's talk about Coyle Ray. For those of you unaware, Coyle Ray numbers have came in, and she's only selling 11K in her first week. That is, number one, shocking to me for, for a couple different reasons. Um, I'm not sure if marketing worked on me, but I did think that the Nicki Minaj feature would have did more than it did. Now, Cola Ray album, in my opinion, is a good attempt at what she does. I like it. Um, and, and the girls I speak to like it. I'm not sure what didn't connect or what happened or what may have took place to make it where it's 11K on the rollout. It may have been the competition because there was a lot going on with Cola Ray drop. Um, and maybe she should have rolled out a couple of more singles. I know they wanted to come right after the Nicki Minaj single, um, but something didn't resonate. You know, that 11K is not good in regards to what we thought she would have sold. Now, I do think that she may have a couple records in that is going to do some slow burns and may get another gold or platinum out of one of those. Um, she She's going to have to work those records. I think it can be discouraged and I think that it, you can be down on yourself when you when you are expecting to do so much and then it come in low like that. That's why expectations are important to harness. Right. That's why you got to do business sometime. Now, dream big. But when you really when you really time when we really doing business, we got to be like, all right, what are we looking at? Who are we affecting? What are the numbers? You got to drill it down. And somehow you got to still dream even when you get them kind of numbers back. Somehow you still got to find the wits and the wherewithal to say I am who I am when you get them kind of numbers back. I was always saying that Loon was doing a podcast when I first kicked off with two, three, four, five hundred people. But I was still doing it like it was six million listening. Number one, I enjoy doing it, but number two, I know I got a position upheld. I got, I'm fighting for something. I'm going after something, right? So I'm diligent with it, and I got to shine even when it's in the dark. I got to do it when ain't nobody looking. I got to do the work that won't nobody never see. But I, I always found the silver lining in and said, Loon, you working on your catalog. Loon, it's your catalog. But you got to find something and give yourself a reason. I had to tell myself, Loon, you working on your catalog. You, this about your catalog now, boy. When they go back, they're going to say he been. Boy, you should catalog now, boy. They're going to go back, you know. And that's what keeps me like, now. Nah, keep putting the game down. Keep putting the game down. Keep putting it down. High level. High level. Chase it. Go at it. Part at a high level. Nigga, know what you talking about, you know. But, you know, I do think that, again, she'll have a couple records that, Probably be slow burns. I do think that coming out and selling that 11K first week hurts your bargaining price, right? It's why a lot of labels, and if she did fight to get that album out when they was in that building saying, no, it's not ready, now she has to deal with them being very, very uninterested in her approach um, on her next attempt. You know, when you fight for something like that, you got to probably do more interviews. You might want to go to every platform calling, 
Right Because now it's all on the line You done put yourself on front street Like them people probably was saying And I don't know this to be the case I'm just examining business at this point But a lot of times the labels will be like Now nah, you're not ready Let's single them out a little more Because you're, you're more effective singles Like And you want to put out a body of work And you fight for it And then it comes out and does that Now from a label perspective now that says all right we put more product out there which does mean more streams right because it's it's just like a pot like if you keep like when you got sown if you keep just adding more and more dirt to a pot how it mound up and if one person listening to one of these songs at all times we make a lot of money so i get it from that standpoint but what they're saying is from a show standpoint you now have to lower that number probably Dirk just tweeted the other week that, yo, Cord needs her 200K a show. It's like, all right, so now with those numbers come back in, that number goes down extremely. Not that she was at 200, but wherever she was at, that number goes down. You had momentum coming off the Nikki feature. Could have had your number, your booking price number at a certain point. Now, you still have the Nikki feature, but it's a different perspective on it now because now you have something that came out that didn't do as well as we thought it would do, which may speak to your reach in this market. And that's what people on the other side, the people that's paying, they're going to argue that fact in that negotiation. If you would have just left that Nikki song and it was charting and doing good and you rolled that out for a minute, they'd probably be like, yo, man, she getting close to get that 200, you know. But I think she'll have another chance at it. I'll speak to Coy soon, um, have a conversation, and, and we should probably put some game down and kind of dig into how she feels, what she thinks her next steps are. You know, things like that. You know, we like to see people... Um, coming up and trying to chase after it we know what that's like and we got a lot of lot a lot a lot of respect for what it takes and what it takes from you to be able to do it meaning not only what the directions say need to be done but the drainage that's on top of that because what people don't know about this game is it drains you my earn your leisure interview and i and i'm gonna bring them back again my earn your leisure interview i had just flew from la to new york um, I was in two cities in one day doing interviews. Then I get to the Earn Your Leisure interview. I'm in New York driving, can't find park, and I got to pay some girl just to park. Like, So I get up there and boom, we instantly got a roll. I really needed time. But this game, sometimes you don't got time. Go, let's get it. But I really needed time to gather my thoughts. I just come firing. You know what I'm saying? And so, again, you got to be willing to adjust on the fly in this game let me talk about this uh really quick and then we'll move on it's crazy how the music business work like if you pay attention to how the waves move in the music business i bet if somebody did a graph and showed like you know sales and songs and how that thing works and of course they would have to categorize and subcategorize it so it can be that specific because i would like to see what happens when Dirk is at an all-time high with the no interviews with the head tap or whatever that song is with the what happened to Virgil and he's floating high and then little baby drop in a minute and right on like what happens there I'm sure there's no competition them dudes is brothers but the what happened to Virgil a lot of people subbed in in a minute for that you know what I'm saying now both of them are fire and if you got enough time you'll run both of them but if you got one minute or, or just that for one song you know it's just funny to see how songs and music and some of your favorite artists creep into each other lane with some of these records it's just interesting to watch the market i like to see everything move around i like to watch shit like that like i see little dirk just dropped the what happened to virgil video it's, it's, it's dope shout out gunner shout out dirk shout out baby too doing this thing you know the south is into the chat and when I say enter the chat, anytime I say somebody enter the chat, that mean they just got a big bank roll. And that's this lingo come from this side. This come from this up there podcast, right? So if you say, oh, man, Loon just enter the chat. They just gave him 50 M's. Slime just entered the chat. Boy, they just cut a check for 20 M's for Slime. You understand me? So that's what enter the chat means. I'm just putting you down, giving you the game or how my lingo, just keeping you up on, you know what I mean? Just how the lingo goes. So 
I think I think all them little niggas gotta watch out for baby. It's funny because all the dope verses I hear of babies, and it may be just me, but I can't never remember the songs. But I be knowing he going off. But when I go to the Apple Music, I'm like, what song get I like? I be it's like I don't know some. I don't know. Maybe I'm not keeping up with titles, but I seen Lil Dirk drop the What Happened to Virgil. I seen him drop the block list. Shout out to Blacklist. Let's play a little bit of that. And not the song. I just want to show y'all what the lookalike looks like. So if you're looking at the screen right now, you see Lil Durk and his lookalike, right? You know, I always say the young boys like to look like the rappers, you know. Um, I think this is an interesting situation now. The lookalike does look like Dirk, especially head down, same kind of outfit, jumping out of a six-figure car. He, he'll pass as Dirk, but if, if you're looking right here, you can see up close the, the differences. But I think he does look like Dirk. People ask me, yo, Lou, how do you feel about it? I hear Joe Budden say that he kind of doesn't feel that Dirk is big enough to have a double. I think that's relative, especially with social media to reach it at. The creativity of online, we got mascots and shit everywhere. Like I know, you know, so now nah, I, you know, I, I I don't I don't know that to be the case. I, I even hear them say that uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame standard has changed or something. I think because they see more of our, from people from our culture getting uh, a placement on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I think that we are evolving. As a coach and starting to recognize the contributions of some of hip hop's greatest acts and some of the things that we do bring to the culture, I think that our effectiveness in the market has been second to none. I think when we talk about the driving force behind some of the biggest brands, the driving force behind some of the most luxurious brands, no matter how up the chart and well to do the people that 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 where those things are the driving force behind a lot of those things still lie somewhere along the lines of hip hop or influenced therefore by hip hop when we deal with some of the high level like Louis Vuitton can almost sell us anything you know we we're damn near by you know we'll buy air airpods airbuds or earbuds we'll buy earbuds from Louis Vuitton for fifteen hundred dollars. And they, they sound the same as the $200 Raycons. Or they sound the same as the $200 AirPods, but because of the LV casing on it, which is something that somebody can do custom in the neighborhood, but it doesn't come from the real people, so it doesn't mean the same thing to us. I think we have an obsession with playing keep up with people that's uninterested in us. You ever try to show up on the park and... You got on everything you need to have on to play basketball, but they just won't pick you. You need to find a different park. You need to create a gym. Look like, look at, see, I pay attention to the detail it took you to try to cater your message to the people that was uninterested. I think if you spent more time catering that message to the people that come from where you come from, I think that's more effective. That's just loan. Loan try to talk to the people that want to be talked to. I'm uninterested in the ones that think they well to do. The bourgeoisie Right I come from the street You just think you got more money than me That's just a fit That's just your imagination Cause they got you in the building every day You think you got more money than me That's your Listen I'm on there Listen I come in the game living a certain way And I don't say that to brag I say that to claim my independence Y'all didn't say nothing when America did it When they, when they stood up and say Yo we come Nigga, we come, I'm claiming my end. I come in the game like this here. And let me calm down. Let me not get a little too excited or passionate about my position. Cause sometimes it it it, it evokes a certain emotion that I I can only fulfill when I get that when I get that type of feeling. But I think Lil Dirk. With the double, I think Dirk was in a situation. That's why I say y'all think Dirk dumb. Either he thinking or somebody over there thinking. Because in my opinion, Dirk went and got that double before NBA Young Boy, one of the op niggas, can use that double. Because had he not aligned, see, I keep telling y'all, Wayne had to learn this from Thug. 
Wayne tried to kick back Thug. Get out of here, Thug. Thug, nigga, I'm this what it is. And damn, it was more effective at that time. Not more influential, just effective in the market. At that particular time, Thug was effective. So you got to deal with that. And at that moment, if you were paying attention in hip-hop, a light should have clicked off and you should have told yourself, oh, the trick is to embrace that. The trick ain't to try to bury it and run from that because it's inevitable with the internet. Discovery is of the essence when you're dealing with the internet. Interesting things will be discovered online. You remember back in the day when they say the revolution will not be televised. That's one of them quotes. Interesting things will be found online. So what happens is... um. I think Dirk was thinking from that standpoint, like, all right, let me get him on my squad, put him in a real video. So now his alliance is with me. When NBA young boy call, he probably ain't going to do that. Now, knowing these young niggas, they'll still do it when young boy call. You done embraced him, put money in his pocket, did that, and he'll still do it. Some of them, not all of them. But some of these young niggas, they still will do it because they clout chasey. Yeah, it's partly clouded where they at. So they looking for clout. So they going to do whatever they need to to get where it's cloudy. So nigga, that's why. But I but I, I see he thinking. I see he paying attention. He trying to eye. And that's just my opinion. And if he wasn't thinking like that, I'm just ahead of the curve. Cause I would have been thinking like that. Oh, shit. That's a double nigga look just like me with the right little outfit on. They can't wait to put him in a video and stomp him out. Or put him in a video and smack him around. Drag him on the back of a truck or something. They can't wait to do something evil to him. So let me, and not evil to him in the name of him being him. Evil to him in the name of him being me in that visual. Let me get him off the, off the table and put him on my team. Boy, these is high-level jujitsu mind games. If you're not paying attention, you will miss it. It's up there podcast to be there to catch it, though. Every single time, eyes wide open. They can't really get nothing past me. I'm paying attention. Because they pay me to pay attention. We're going we gonna to speak about Elon Musk. I'm going to take a break. We'll come back. We still got plenty more show. We got the Subway Shooter. We got a lot to talk about today. I come to give my people quality. I come to give my people quality, something they can hold on to, some tangible content. We getting real tired and getting real weary of the approach to the game at this point. It's starting to be more unattractive. The further I get in regards to the information, what it take to get some of these things done, I just see a lack of effort in a lot of things, and I come to change that, and not from a standpoint of ass-kicking, but just from a standpoint of example made. Come, we come to raise the bar and put the standard in a different place. Let's talk about Elon Musk. Elon Musk offers to buy Twitter for $43 billion and take company private. Now, people are saying, what is this about? I have a limited understanding, but I have a unique ability to explain my understanding. So I'll try to give to you what I got just in my limited reading of what I was looking into dealing with Elon Musk. For those of you unaware, I watch Elon. I watch some of the greatest minds that this culture and game and world has to offer, not only uh, in, in the United States, but even abroad. I study the ancestors. I understand all these kind of things, right? So when I look at Elon or Kanye, I, I, I understand them from a standpoint of, I knew who they was when they first started out. Not know them personally, but know them creatively. See, you can know someone creatively. You can be very in tune with what someone was at or at least what they was front facing and consumer facing, what they were showing consumers in a time when they were vulnerable before the money got a hold to them. Sometimes you get people's real perspective right before they get in the tunnel. It's almost like TMZ, you ask the right question right before they get in the car, you might get a hell of an answer. You know, but if they got time, they walking and they thinking, they got time. But if you can catch them, sometimes you can get the truth out of them when they have limited time to make a lie. But this isn't a one-step process with Elon Musk. This started off with him first buying 9% of Twitter. 
It's being said that he done that in a way that was not sneaky, not illegal, but unconventional. Right? Um, it's like back in the day when it wasn't considered cheating for holding the ball in basketball, but because they didn't have a 24-second clock, a dude to score one time and they'll just hold the ball for the rest of the quarter. The score will be 8 to 10. Four quarters been played because the, the strategy of the game was influenced by the rules or lack thereof. So he went and got Twitter in a position to get 9% and become Twitter's largest stakeholder. What that comes with is control. Now, it's not 100% control, but when you become the largest stakeholder, you can literally stop decisions from being made because you got 9% of the company and everybody else got a smaller amount than that. When you first look at Elon Musk, you understand that he's a free thinker. He's a free mind in a cage position, right? Although he's rich and and famous and powerful you even heard him speak on his latest ted talk about how he was placed in a position where he had to save tesla's life by saying something publicly that he didn't stand by privately there will be a time where sacrifices have to be made to to gain power now, I don't know this to be true or not, but he spoke about the SEC and how he had to come out and say that Tesla, he said something about Tesla had funding, and I think it was sort of illegal based on the current rules, and so he had to come out and say something or he would lose financial backing. And it wasn't what he said. He had to specifically say that he was lying. And so now he says, Let's you know that the reason he did that is because they would have killed Tesla had that not been the case. Tesla is his access to power, access to the next level. With that being said, he's still connected to voices of the culture, dudes like Kanye West, people like Joe Rogan, right? He's still next to those guys. Joe Rogan, I think, um, he watches in a different way than he watches Kanye. Him being a study, a, a person with with high level game and thinking that he has, I know he 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 studies these people from different perspectives. But Joe, I think, affected his understanding. If you ever listen to Elon talk, he has a lot of information about a lot of different things, especially the things that he's interested in, like free speech, Twitter, AI. Rockets, you know, uh, Tesla, the real one, you know, the history of electric cars and things like he's going to really give you some game about that. And so with him being so close to Rogan and seeing them try to cancel Rogan, what they did to Kanye, how they try to ostracize Kanye, he's now moving to try to buy Twitter. Now, people say, man, why is this a big deal? Number one, a lot of different things come in place right here. You don't buy Twitter, Twitter like you do any other company to say, well, we are now players in the social media game. You become bigger than the government if you get to acquire Twitter at 100%. Twitter has single-handedly been instrumental in the last few elections. Twitter has single-handedly been instrumental in the canceling and the springboarding of brands people and things twitter and social media has an effect on things that we won't know within the next two or three years it'll take five to ten years to really know the effects of this social media thing so you don't acquire this like some old company this is a big big deal you become a major player in the world game at that point and see his buddy joe rogan had jack dorsey and see, I don't really talk about a lot of these things yet in the culture because I'm just dealing with the hip hop shit right now. But we got a we got a large audience that we got to tap into. We got a lot lot of things that we know about, talk about, see, and and view with a different understanding. So um, Rogan ended up having the Twitter CEOs on there, a couple of them, and 
you know, they talked and talked about a couple of different things. And there, it wasn't a clear understanding about what was took off, why it was took off, what's accepted, why it's accepted. You know, there's a gray area there. And when you had those conversations, it couldn't be more clear. Right. But the thing is, you battling with robots. Like a lot of times I post something and it's down within seconds and flagged for something. And a lot of times that's wrong. I wonder how many accounts are being took off Instagram and Twitter and these different things in which the algorithm may not have it 100 percent wrong. But let's say you have six strikes before your account is took and two or three of those strikes are are a mistake and you have no want no avenue to be able to get that back and then that affects your livelihood and all it i just wonder how far that goes because again it, there's rules in place but we not had we don't have any human beings examining those rules now we have people putting rules in position anything like this can't go anything like that can't go and and a lot of the people uh want to know who makes that decision and is it leaning toward the left or the right? And that's a political talk. If the left or the right, the Republicans or the Democrats, is it leaning which way and why? Um, and 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 who makes those decisions? Elon talked about him acquiring nine percent of of uh, Twitter, and then he spoke about him making that forty three billion dollar advance at buying it cash. And then we'll come back with some games. Let's listen to that in the u.s and and of course the the, the moral good that you think it will achieve you you've described yourself elon as a thing that people can't say the that the moral good that you think a couple different things one now that the word is out that twitter is for sale there's a lot of people overseas that's interested i've seen some king from one of these spots come out and say yo 43 billion is too low we offer more and that's not because they're dealing with some product that's going to sell around the world. A lot of you guys know that you get on Twitter for free. You're on Twitter for free. It's about controlling the narrative. If you own Twitter, you have the ability to control the narrative. Now, you hear Elon speak. Again, it's, it's all fun and games why you alive to have so many different um, structured ideas. So many things in place that's noble, Right. The thing is, is when you pass, right, we see what happens to Apple, right? He, ha he has a plan for Apple in, in, in the event of his demise. But those different minds will slowly change the direction of Apple, right? They say if you set a watch the day you're born and put one on your wrist and, and one on your mom's wrist and you guys go different ways. She lives in the south and you live up north. That even though you set that watch on 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 at the exact time, that over time it'll have a different time on it. Not just the hours dealing with the time zones, but I'm speaking about over time just a little bit. Like they can they can tilt the ship just a tad bit, but because it's going seven thousand miles, that tad bit changed the trajectory over time. Another thing I see Elon speak about, and I think is interesting. To say the least is he speaks about open the algorithm. Now, this is dangerous. When you open the algorithm, not only do you expose the biasness or, or lack thereof, you either expose that this is the best system we can get or that this system has been full of shit since we started. So something gets discovered once you open that algorithm. And when he speaks about open the al opening the algorithm, I want to be clear on what that means. Everything you see has code. They have a very, very hard time. And I want to be clear on this, too, because expectation is everything. They have a hard time monitoring the amount of tweets that go up or the amount of Facebook posts that go up or the amount of Instagram posts that go up or even YouTube videos. When we talk about Instagram posts or even tweets, those things are coming rapidly so that they don't have the manpower or the ability to put someone in a seat to be able to monitor every single tweet therefore they have to rely on robots interactions of machines the same way where there's so many cars on the road that you can't have someone out there directing traffic we have to deal with what traffic signs 
that says red means stop, greens mean go. Give a five second delay, 10 second delay for those not paying attention or rushing through. And we try to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Now, when we dealing with Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, some of those things, again, those robots get it wrong. But what Elon is speaking to is not why they get it wrong, but what they're looking to get. When you identify the algorithm, it allows me to create around that and make my content more algorithm friendly. Right. With the creative minds we have behind the machine, boy, we can just figure out what is cool to be on social media, which therefore is what we call leads to get more people to come and look at or listen to what it is we have to offer. It's a win win situation. So, number one, you do that. Number two, you let us in and you compromise the industry standard. Because believe it or not, the same camera that NBC use and ABC use or some variation of it. So once we start to learn what's being used, we start to be able to identify how to use it. And then therefore we become powerful in the space. And you can believe that that's not a coincidence that every time that black folks or the less fortunate figure out the industry standard in that industry, that industry now is depleted, is exhausted. There's no more financial gain now. It's a dead industry. Everything that we find out about, they either make it legal or they deplete it, right? Um, or keep it at a certain price point. Also, we need to see, yo, why when putting game down about being liberated, getting money, information, why isn't that promoted in the same light as rap music? See, and we got to be careful when we communicate even that because they, they get tricky. They get tricky with what they do to us, right? So if we go to arguing that, yo, you 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 promote not rap, you promoting us talking to each other crazy like this, but you ain't promoting that. They'll just say, you know what, we won't promote both, and then therefore we'll muzzle rap, which therefore can affect the sales. So we got to communicate clearly that rap in itself isn't an issue. It's a beautiful thing. It, it's it, it taps into culture. From a standpoint that not many things can do So we appreciate rap for what it is And how it runs alongside pop culture Or culture in that in that regard And so when we classify things just as rap We gotta be careful Cause I'm telling you they use words against us And we gotta be careful And make sure to drill that down If people are trying to go against certain violence That's being said and rap and things like that You need to be very specific in doing so because we don't want to ostracize rap in its entirety. It's been a pathway for our, for our people to come out the ghetto. So we got to be cognizant of that. But industry standard is important, right? If you knew how your job got the money, you know how to run the business, right? They'll promote you all the way up into a manager. So you know how to run the business. You just don't know how the business is being ran. You see, so there's two different things happening on the back end. You don't understand the operations standpoint of it, but you got the functionality down. You got all these things down. Once you understand the operational standpoint, now they have a problem because now they dealing with a CEO and not a manager. And so if they expose the algorithm, which is the industry standard that all of them tend to use, right? It allows us to now place ourselves in a situation to tap into that algorithm because we're the most creative and take advantage of what it is that's set forth. Now, with that same breath, it allows other people to do so as well. Again, I just mentioned that, yo, people saying Twitter for sale, a lot of these dudes won't in on that because it's a powerhouse in the space. It's more important than ABC. It becomes a tycoon if you get Twitter. You become a tycoon overnight in the media space. You, you become bigger than ABC, NBC, things like that. If not bigger, just as big as. I would almost argue Twitter as a, Twitter's effect on how people consume and get news at this point is more effective than daytime television or ABC. Now, traditionally, they can get things out and make it effective in a way. I think it may take more time. There's a different approach to it, but Twitter can get it right out and it's gone. 
Um, so Elon, after doing this and after like laying out what he wanted to do with it and how he wanted to approach it, they see that, oh, my God, he already has as many shares. He already has more shares than anyone. So now we're in a position where if we even say no to his offer, he may do a hostile takeover and just buy it out through the market. So they birthed this thing that's called the poison pill. Now, this is an interesting approach to to this problem, because if you just hear it, you think, all right, so that should stop him from being able to what they're trying to do is stop him from being able to take hold of the company or with her or 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 have some kind of hostile takeover. Or if they even say we don't want to sell it, he still buys it just going through the market at a, at a, at a certain price. And if you have as many shares or you have the most shares, you are more influential in, again, what happens with that business. And with Twitter being a powerhouse in the space, you see where that problem can arise or why people can kind of get spooked about that, especially on the side of the people that don't agree with Elon or some of the things he may stand for, right? Because you're always going to have people on the other side of you. So they do the poison pill to try to stop him from being able to take over. Now, what this means is if they were to reject the bid, he has enough capital money to be able to just buy it again through stock option. This is my understanding, and I could be wrong. I need to tap in with some people, but I like to get my own understanding of things if I'm going to talk about it. I don't just want to read a text or get someone else, right? So I try to go see my understanding of it. So my understanding of this poison pill thing is it won't it, you would think that it was to stop him but it, it's not so it, it it can't stop him from buying it but what it does is it provides that it provides the stocks with inflation so what it does is say say that elon says all right so i offered y'all 43 billion y'all didn't want it i'm gonna spend 43 more billion on just stocks and own it that way just whatever 43 billion can give me in stocks, which would make me the owner if I own 29, 40 percent, 70 percent of this company or whatever it may be by stock options. And so what this does is it makes it gives an option to the to the shareholders that are already there to buy stocks at a discounted rate. Now, so what that means is if he says, I right, I'm going to just go out and buy Twitter since y'all rejected my bid. If the stock is $50, let's just say for, for conversation and podcast sake, if the stock is $50, my understanding is the shareholders would get a discounted rate. So let's just say $25. So he would have to buy Twitter out at $50 while people that's already interested in Twitter and shareholders of Twitter will get those same stocks simultaneously at the same time. For lesser than he would get it Which would make it really expensive For him to buy the company out Because those people will start to buy him too Especially at that discounted right rate Knowing that he wants it So the idea is just to kind of make it more expensive Again it doesn't stop him from being able to buy it If he just wants to buy it straight out From a shareholder or a stock option standpoint That's my understanding I'm not a financial advisor, so I could be wrong, but I like to kind of try to get the information myself. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know. But that's my understanding based on what I'm reading. Um, very powerful thing to do by Twitter. It'll be a very um, monumental move because, again, it makes you one of the big players in this thing that we call media. So we'll take a quick break and then we'll be back with a little more podcast. And then we'll get y'all out of here for the day, man. Get y'all out of church early today. We'll be back. At some point, y'all going to admit I was right. I know I got a lot of fans that probably know it, don't vocalize it. But at some point, when y'all go back in my catalog and y'all see the time frame in which I'm saying certain things, y'all going to say I'm right. Y'all going to say this dude really knows what he's talking about. If you go back um, or if you listen now, you hear academics Going at Corla Ray because she wouldn't come on his platform. Now he's vocalizing what I said months ago. Like, yo, you don't come on my platform. And now, now we're not favorable on my Instagram in regards to your name, your sales. We're going to report certain things that may affect the way that you're viewed by the casual consumer. Right. 
I've been called that. Or you hear Joe Budden say, yo, I'm hurt. I got PTSD. Everything I've tried to taught and lead, they use against me. The game I give them, they turn around and use against me. I, I said that months, months, months ago before the breakup even happened. It happens from the, I just see by the conversations. You see by what's happening. If, if you're a guy that understands energy and frequency and vibe, and just understand conversation and communicating. You can tell when something is said this way, but it it's really it, it, what happens is it's like a big circle when you say something, right? And so a circle, if you ever seen a graph, how a circle can overlap, right? So it can it can mean this, but it can mean that. And so it's just who's saying it, why they said it, what situation. Like it's a lot to digest when you try to view. Destruction of friendships or destruction of business in regards to podcasts, and I think a lot of people take this thing lightly. This is not a light thing you see happening when you see people get in front of the mic. Like I, I watch some of these guys, and, and and I'm impressed. I'm like, yo, they're really doing a show. Like they're really, really kicking it. You know, in regards to conversation, segues, and dudes are. Operating at a high level in this game Now some people are just sitting down And just asking questions I think that that's not what really gets it done Now that can happen And that can be effective in the marketplace But I'm talking about the ability To really resonate With the people that's viewing You gotta be able to do both But that's that's a conversation for another time Um but when I when I see Act doing that, I told you guys that, yo, you're going to leverage your platform. And I probably will do the same thing. I may not be vocal about it because while I'm being vocal to send a shockwave through the industry and let artists know that this is the results of you not coming to speak to me. Because that's really what it's for. This really ain't even about Cola Ray. This is really about Dirk and other people that's kind of. Going around him and doing them interviews You see what I'm saying and, and not coming to his platform And so what's happening is He's using this latest situation with Cola Ray as, as a way to push out to the industry That yo, this is how we gonna handle you On this page that everybody follows If you don't come to the podcast Dirk is still Dirk got back to number one He hasn't been on there and so for, for me, at, although you're sending that shockwave to the industry and to the other rappers, I think that it's taken from the brand a little bit. I think for the, the savvy thinker, the cerebral mind, I think they're viewing it the way that I'm saying like, oh shit, these people are turning down academics podcasts. And then when you think about that, you're like, yo, why are they turning it down? You see what I'm saying? And it makes the consumer thing with them. They turning it down. Damn, that's crazy. It's academics podcast. We thought, acad you see what I'm saying? And you are solidifying that. So I, I probably wouldn't do that. There's a lot of dudes that I'm supposed to have did interviews with that for whatever reason, the interviews didn't go through. I know I'm powerful enough to get it done by myself. And you fuck with me whenever you fuck with me. But I won't change, but the price will. Yeah, my price had changed because I was fucking, I was trying to tell dudes, yo, get with me why things were like in, in a way where I could understand that there was some love involved, that you embraced the movement prior to the results being in, prior to the background checks and dudes figuring out, oh, this dude really should have been, you know what I'm saying? And not saying that to be cocky, but I, I got information about what it is I'm doing. I'm informed about what they doing on the market. I know how those two things weigh against each other, and I'm not going to dilute what it is that I bring to the market for the sake of other people's comfortability. I do myself a disservice along with the others that DM me hundreds of people every day and, and reach out to me with brands and black people that tell me, yo, man, what you doing? We ain't never seen that. Podcasting like that? Nigga, we can go to your one podcast and get a news segment, get a motivational snippet, get a comedy segment, get nigga, it's so many things, get information, get some game. Nigga, it's so many things. You understand you get from one place 
But I got to be able to identify that to the market because they're going to try to put a muzzle on a, on a barking dog. Yeah, you're going to try to put a muzzle on a barking dog. They don't want me to be loud about it and right. Now, if I was loud and wrong, that's one thing. They not offended by loud and wrong. They think it's a, it's a game. They, they Matter of fact, they bring loud and wrong closer. Let somebody be ignorant, loud on the internet, ignorant and wrong and just spewing things. They get all the interviews and the love in the world from the blog sites. That's how this works. But when you loud and right and damn, he might seem to understand something. He might be doing it in a way that's more effective than right. So anyway, um, I just think that it kind of may take from the brand, right? Uh, because what it does is it does let us know that they're turning it down. When the interview doesn't happen, the consumer doesn't know if you didn't welcome them or they didn't want to come there. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you get big enough to have enough fans and he may think he's in that place, I think in a podcasting place, he's not there. But what happens is we operating now in this new era of podcasting and things like that. We operating from a holistic standpoint, just as a brand. So he's viewing himself as a brand, whether he's effective or not. In the podcast space And we know he, he You know he gonna get certain numbers he, he gotta push with Spotify And he does have a fan base But I just wouldn't be coming out Saying who ain't coming on here You know what I'm saying Especially if I ain't Just You know I gotta be providing that sauce Like that real deal Like man listen They ain't coming over here man They run Like they ain't You know what I'm saying I don't know I may not never do it I just don't see the value in doing it I think again it just affects people who understand it in a different way. And I hear the talk about first week sales and sales and sales. And you know me, I'm a man of information. I don't deal with emotion. Right. And so what's good for the goose is good for the right. So you you know where I was going with that. So what happens is when I hear dudes talk about first week sales and how much this and that. So, yo, don't nobody post their podcast numbers. Don't nobody post how many downloads they podcast get, how many ads they get you on that last one, right? Because the consumers don't know their business, right? What you do as a podcaster or as a brand these days, you try to fudge everything together, right? My rap doing this, but I bought five companies and I got this going on. Got a little artist right here doing good. I got a company here, two Airbnbs, some land over there, and a tractor trailer too. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I I got my hands in a lot, whole bunch of shit because what's happening with music is we thought we locked out the labels. We thought we locked them out with the stream and we thought we unlocked something the same way we did with the internet. But the thing with the stream and there was so much money involved that people had a real interest of, on getting a hold of it that they they figured out a way how to license the music in real time to these companies and be able to make money with each other and get equity in the company. So these labels have equity in a lot of these big Spotify's and things like that. This ain't just a uh, uh, you luckily got on what this playlist. There's some thought process behind this. This is carefully crafted. This ain't a thing that you know just because your song how did it be there or just because you famous it'll be there. There's what does the label have interest in at this time? Who? submitted it from the label who submitted it period how did we even get notice of it now you can end up on there but just like a dj clue mixtape it's the number that you end up on there that's even ineffective how many times you get into your car and you listen to a playlist number one through 60 or you listen to six albums in a row it ain't gonna happen so them first five or six is the important ones and a lot of times the market doesn't determine that. The labels determine that. Now, when you're dealing with somebody like Baby or one of them, they going to dictate it, you know, as well as have the label interest. And, and so it's more organic. But sometimes you'll deal with a nigga sitting at number four and be like, what is this song? You see? So it's still um, a way that they figured out how to influence the numbers. Right? So just imagine... In the street, right? Just imagine that little homer was hustling for you and you can dictate when the drought come. 
you know, it's Christmas time. You need a little bit more money. You can dictate the AO. So since I'm supplying it and then he turned around and had to slick go through me to get here. So I can figure out a way how to make a drought on him. And so sometimes you're dealing with a rapper in the midst of the label trying to make a drought for him. Rap niggas go through weird things when these labels are in the last few tapes on, uh, uh, of the contract, last few albums of the contract. Because now we understand that we're only helping you in your negotiation, right? If we turn around and put four more million into these next one or two projects from a marketing standpoint, when it's time to re-up, you're going to say you're the biggest shit in the world. So we'll take our foot off the gas. We may move you down on playlists. You're still on playlists, so you don't have that fight to say, yo, I'm not on such and such playlist. You'll be down on the numbers, though. You'll be way down there. We'll move you down on those playlists. And trust me, there's probably 20, 30, 40, 50 playlists that really runs the numbers. Right? You get most of your plays from playlists. Especially if you're an act that's, that's like, Famous but 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 still in discovery mode Right And so again I've always talked about it being a recipe for you to be a big dog Now I'm not sure how I can argue with 9,000 records in the first week You know it's rough for me to argue with that You can almost argue that Nicki uh, carried a lot of that Because that song is on there Again you know, I think Cola Ray is a, is a great artist and we'll have an opportunity to do it again. And also, these records will bubble up. I think some of them will bubble up. She'll probably get another gold um, or something out of it, maybe a gold or two out of it. And and, and the album will, will probably come up and sell, sell some more. But it's just interesting to me that people are misinformed or either misrepresenting what's happening um, in regards to how these things work in, in regards to playlists And how they influence the numbers And I think it's about 60% of all plays 70% of all plays come from playlists Maybe more than that Last article I read But you gotta really understand that If Spotify If, if, if Universal Owns some of Spotify And you're signed to a subsection of Universal Let's say Atlantic is Owned by Warner Which is owned by Universal Right And then there's a situation They can just send a kite up Hey yo Move this down Move that around This is our approach For the next six months Like and they start to move Move those chips around Now after you sign again They move you back Into the machine What you gotta try to do Is sustain your 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 fan base First, you got to identify your fan base and who's just there on behalf of the machine. So your job as an artist as you move through is to try to carve out who's here as diehards while you working with the machine. Now, you got to do this simultaneously. You got to be thinking, nigga, not talking. You got to be thinking, not drinking, nigga. You see what I'm saying? So as you working with the machine, you got to be having somebody on your team that's carving out who is the real fans and who is here because the single with such and such is hot right now. Who really is fans want to get close to, bro? How do you do that, Loon? Well, at certain shows, you do meet and greets. You 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 ask people when they buy merch, do they want to sign up for uh-uh-uh? Where they get text messages and emails directly from such and such. Right, people that want to be in touch, like you, you figure that out while you're working on behalf of the machine, because they're gonna have you in some places that you may can't get by yourself, but you in there right there. You in there right then, and you may be able to pass a number here, do something there. You dig what I'm saying? So, um, I just figured I'd talk about that, and I'll probably get talk about it a little more next week. Right now, I want to deal with the baby shooting a dude in the leg that showed up on his property. Let's listen to what they said on the news in, um, in Charlotte, North Carolina. The baby was home last night during a shooting on his property. That's according to the Troutman police chief. The baby was not injured in all of this. Queen City News reporter Robin Kennedy is live in Troutman for us. And Robin, do we know any more details about who exactly this person was who was shot? 
Any police say the man who was shot did not live at the home and he was not welcome here. Now, police also telling us that the only two other people who were at the home at the time of the shooting were the baby and another person. <laughs> police say the man who was shot last night did not go inside the house. The chief saying everything happened outside the baby's mansion, but on his property. The police department department is not releasing any names of the shooter or the person who was shot. The police chief says the baby's mansion has a concrete wall and a chain link fence. There were also no trespassing signs posted up. One of them says we have guns and shovels. Workers nearby telling us they're surprised anyone would try to enter the baby's property without being invited. Working around this area, it's obviously pretty secured, so to okay. step over there and get in the way or get to them, you're basically just writing your own death sentence. Now, the police chief says the man who was shot was hit in his lower body with one gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police would not tell us if the baby knows that man. I'm reporting live in Troutman, Robin Kennedy. You see how she say, the baby, they funny. So they also released the 911 call. We'll listen to that and then we'll we'll get some game about the whole situation. Is he what? Is he completely alert? Do you hear him? Do you not hear this man, bro? Sir, I'm asking you, is he completely alert? Yeah, I can't hear you repeating every question that you ask me because he's over in the screen. Bro. Like, y'all just get somebody here. And give them, tell them when they pull up to try to hit the siren or something so I can know to open the gate. Alright, is there more than one wound? Say what? Is there more than one wound? All I see is one individual. I don't know if you got somebody with him. I don't know. We have no way of knowing that. But in order for him to get here, he had to jump over a fence and everything. I'm going to need you to secure your firearm, sir. Sir. It's secured. Um, um. Sir. It's secure. I told you it's secure. I'm not putting it down with this guy. Sir, is there any serious bleeding? I gotta say yes, bro. Oh, oh, he shot him in his leg. Y'all hear him? Get here. Get him oh, together. Sorry, what? Uh, uh, got him on my property. Hurry up and get here. Sir, what did you do? Uh, I shot him in his leg. Okay. And why did you do He's that? Trespassing on my... He's trespassing on my property. Calling me by my name. I don't know what he's here for, what he's here to take, what he's here to do. But he's okay, he ready. He's neutralized. He's neutralized until you guys get here. Sir, are you with him now? He's right here in front of me. Okay. Is he awake? Well, well football football in my, my property. property. Sir, is he awake? Yes. yes. Do you hear him? Is he breathing? Yes. 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 He's, he's stopped. stopped. Okay. And it's his leg. So you hear the 911 phone call. It's been reported that that is someone of the community, a man that's elderly, uh, that wanders uh, in the community. Um, that's, a, that's a very sad situation. Now, we do and, and, and always and will stand and be a firm believer in protecting uh, your loved ones and your property. Uh, we are from the South in which bearing arms um, and protecting yourself. See, I, I, I don't really believe in police response time i think over the years police response time still ain't got no better so i think in a lot of time and a lot of times i'm not willing to risk what could happen for what might happen right they may get there but I also might die you know what i'm saying so i'd rather just hold it in my own hands so we do we are firm believer in that now with that being said i believe that with the baby being as big as he is in this city i can imagine the police have a dislike for the dude you know the police don't like a nigga that done shot three four niggas and live in a big mansion over there with lamborghinis and maybachs i think you got to be careful in that town See, I'm from a town where I know what they're going to try to do. Now, you don't get, I mean, that's on you. You do what's best for you. But I'm saying, though, I know it's somebody in one of them police buildings higher up.
they don't like to see that situation this dude is 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 and he protecting himself let's be clear about what the reports are about the interactions with him and some of these individuals some of these individuals the reports are he's he's protecting himself like this dude had to jump over the gate and this and that and the third and you know we handle those things like i you know i've been in a situation before where the police have told me hey, if they come through here y'all do what y'all need to do or if this happened hey, and they and they try to break in you kill them the police will tell you that in the south you know and i'm sure that some of that is black on black and so they 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 understand that they probably wouldn't say that if it was an if it was a white kid or they kid or some coming in or trying to break in some you know they'll probably try to hope that you have a different approach maybe not nonetheless I think when you cause ruckus or when they when they look at you as an issue or you you know you done shot several people in the town you know you done shot several people in the town and and let's not forget before he got. On the on the next level, they were searching him every time he went somewhere. He used to have to post about what the police was doing. My thing is, I know that it's somebody somewhere in one of them buildings that's hating about that. That little nigga Rich running around. He done shot a couple of people. He be running around the city, and now everybody come out or this or that. You know, it just I know how they feel. Um, and so he just better not be having nothing around him doing wrong Because he probably under investigation from them folk You understand me on some other shit Just trying to figure out how they can take him down and get him out the way You know what I'm saying He might be the most powerful rapper out of the town other than Cole But Cole them is from a different part or different, But he's from that area And he ain't even on that type vibe You know don't nothing really be happening with him He ain't really one of them type dudes He a cool million dollar nigga You know what I'm saying So again I just I don't know man Sometimes I think about that I also say yo When the, the, the baby got rich And dude been going through a lot Like dude man Just look at dude career Like dude got rich And shit been happening on top of Happening on top of Happening on top That's a lot to take in Like I know everybody Want to gloss over that even when he shot the dude, like, I know the police don't like when he posts shit like, hey, yo, I, I spared a dude and all that. I know they feeling the way about that. They don't want no black little nigga feel like he got power or nothing like that to do nothing like that. They don't, even if the law state that, they the only ones, they think they the only ones that can get away with things like that. You know, so I'm watching that. Now I'm watching... You know him in that town Because I know how towns do niggas like us You know get some money Get powerful Sit up on the hill You understand me Make more than the police chief The mayor All they shit together Make more than all them together Everybody run the city Make more than all them together And not because I'm better than them Just because I'm blessed I'm in a situation to be able to capitalize And the market dictates my value and I didn't say, they said this what I'm worth. They pay me this amount. You got to remain humble because your spot not secure. You'll be a fool to look at the game and think your spot is secure when we've seen someone in that same position prior to you. You had to take it from someone, which means that someone can take it from you. A lot of these dudes get to popping and forget that you may got to come back down that ladder. Be careful. Be careful, do good business, understand people, understand the game. But I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to speak on that because I felt like that, you know, it was a shooting at his crib. And uh, and, and, and and the dude jumped the gate. You heard the dude hollering. He was sitting right there. It's crazy that cause they trying to get him to admit to some, some kind of salacious crime over the phone. She more interested in... Getting me to admit I shot him and with what gun and this and that, then how to get the police into the mansion. Because, see, they still got shit to go through to get up in here. You know what I'm saying? They can't just pop up on this. Yeah, I got to hit something and let you in here. Or they, they got to jump the fence just like anybody else. 